Hello everyone, welcome back. In this Selenium Python tutorial, we are going to learn how you can handle sliders using Selenium Python. Now many websites nowadays, the e-commerce website that you see have the sliders for selecting the price options, right? And I'll open an example of that particular website. So this is snapdeal.com and you can see here in order to select the price range, I can select this particular slider, right? So how within Selenium can we handle these? sort of sliders to select a particular price range how can we basically verify that and this is the actual question that somebody on my youtube channel asked and i am creating a video to and took this real example so that it is actually helpful with the real example rather than the dummy website so all the scenarios that i have covered in the past if you guys come across with any of the real scenario that you are struggling with and want me to cover a video on that then please comment and I will make a video which will handle those real scenarios, real scenario websites and how to handle those easily. All right. So let's go ahead and let me simply copy this particular link. Right. So the link that we want to start with, we can take any of the link where this particular price range is available, but I will take the exact link that the person has posted and so that it solves the problem and we understand how we can use it right so this is the particular url that we need to take and we need to adjust the price accordingly using selenium web driver okay so what i'll do is i'll quickly copy this existing code that we have used for the drag and drop and create a new python file and i will name it as demo sliders paste everything here and I will remove everything except and change the class name to sliders demo sliders and then sliders underscore demo all right now which website we are trying to learn is this particular website and see how we can handle this slider here so I'll copy the URL paste it here and then this particular statement will maximize that particular window okay now in order to slide or handle the sliders we will be using same action chains class and will be identifying the web element that we want to drag and drop so basically action chain cl chains class provides the method drag and drop so we'll use action chains and drag and drop to handle these sliders okay now before that let me identify these web elements okay so what we want to slide we want to slide this particular little web element and then little, this particular little web element right so we'll see one by one and then we'll understand how you can handle both of these together okay so let me just right click and inspect this particular web element and i'll quickly copy this locator so this locator looks pretty big so what i'll do is let me start typing in so this this is an uh, anchor right so this is anchor so let's write a uh, xpath which is a little bit smaller and then this anchor if you see what exactly okay so in the class it basically contains if you see this left handle and the right handle right so the right web element is the right handle and the left hand left one is the left handle so we can simply say at or we'll say contains click on here so we'll say contains and class contains right so we'll say class and what does the class contain the class contains left handle so we'll, we can simply type in left open handle and close and that's it and we say enter and yes this is matching this particular web element you can see that this has been highlighted okay so this looks little small and efficient so let me copy that and i'll say element one so we'll simply say driver dot find element by xpath and paste the xpath that i have copied for the left web element and similarly for the right one if we see we have this unique right handle right so if we change it to right handle let's see if it identifies yes it does and you can see that this is highlighted so we'll use this particular xpath okay for element two and we'll say element two and instead of left handle we just have to change to right handle so we'll simply change it to right handle rest everything is same for both the locators now we have identified these both of these locators what we need to do is now there are many ways right so there are many ways to handle these sliders and in case there are synchronization issues so i will simply put sleep after 
the statements right so i won't put it here but after the slider i'll put it so i'll cover multiple ways how you can handle and many times one particular way doesn't work okay so in that case you have to figure out what other methods or what other sequence of chains you want to build so that it actually slides okay so the first one is we'll simply say action chains right and then we'll pass the argument driver there and the simplest one is to drag and drop by offset okay so we'll simply say drag and drop by offset and what we want to drag is we want to drag the element one so we'll start with the first element the left hand side icon and where we want to drop in the x offset so x offset is from this particular location right so this is at a particular location how many pixels we want to move it in the x direction okay in the y direction we want, we do not want to move it anywhere so y we can keep it zero and x we have to basically say 50 40 10 whatever number we want to move in so say for example i want to move it 60 pixels in the x direction and y we need to keep it at zero and then we simply need to say perform all right so this will help us to move this particular icon the one that is that i my mouse is pointing to to move in this direction in the x direction and not move any pixel in the y direction because this slider can only move in the x direction can't go in the y direction okay so y direction we do not need to provide we simply need to just mention that zero in the y direction okay and then once you do perform I'll put some sleep there so that if there are any synchronization issues, we can handle those. Uh, I'll explain about the weight concept in Selenium WebDriver in just a couple of next tutorials so that we do not have to hard code these sleep values or the weight values in our code. Okay. And that's pretty much it. So this particular line will move this particular slider in the right hand side by 60 pixel. Okay. Let me create an object of this particular class and I will say demo slider, just name it as DS the variable name and then call the method ts.slidersdemo and let's try to run it and see whether it works perfectly fine so it should open the page maximize the page and then move the slider right you can see the slider has been moved in the right hand side by 60 pixel all right so i'll put a little bit more weight for covering other scenarios okay so this is one of the method that you can use okay the second thing say for example many times it doesn't work so what you can do is you can use you can just say drag action chains and then simply say click and hold there is another method which says click and hold so what it does is it will click on a particular web element so it will click on this particular web element whatever element you want to provide so i'll say element one so what this method will do is it will click on this element one and hold it okay and then just you can say pause okay because synchronization might cause certain issues so say for example i will pause after holding it okay and then i will simply say move by offset so there is another method we'll say move by offset okay and we want to provide the x and y offset here so say for example i want to move in the x direction 50 and the y nothing needs to be moved there and after this let me minimize this after this because i have clicked and ho held this particular web element right and like manually if i just try to replicate the same thing so if you want to move this particular web element in the right hand direction first thing is you have to hover over your mouse right and then click and hold and then you move in the right direction okay wherever you want to drop it and then release the button right only then it will get selected at that particular location same thing we have to do in our code so we have moved by the offset and then what we have to do is we have to dot release we have to release we have to call release function and then we have to say dot perform right so you can see that as the name suggests action chains this is the chain of action so we are clicking and holding then pausing moving by offset and then releasing and then performing right so this will help you in case this doesn't work 
try this and there are many different ways you can try okay so let's run this and see that this does the same thing as we have seen in the previous run so it should maximize the page and it should move it in the right direction right you can see it has moved and selected the value now the third way okay so for example this doesn't work as well let's try something else and this is what i recommend basically that you do try to explore things to learn more okay so the third option you can use or permutation combination of the method is say for example you want to move to element right so the first thing is as we do manually okay we move to element right so we move our mouse to the element okay and then click and hold does the same thing but sometimes you if you want to specify or want to be very specific that the control basically has moved to that particular web element actually then use move to element and i want to move to element one right and then after that say for example i want to pause right and this is required only if you are having synchronization issues and you are not able to handle the sliders properly so just try to replicate whatever you will do manually for that particular web element so move to a web element then pause and then you know click and hold right so we'll say click and hold what we want to hold we'll say element one we want to click and hold and then after that we can say move by offset okay the same method that we have used so we'll say move by offset and we want to move say for example 80 pixels in the right hand direction and provide zero for the y-axis because we don't want to move in the y direction and then after moving by offset same thing we'll release and then we'll perform right so this we change it and then perform okay so this is in this particular line you are providing the things very specifically as you will do in the manual steps so you are moving to a web element then you are pausing then clicking and holding moving by offset so this helps if there are any synchronization issues most of the time the first line is more than enough to handle these sliders okay so if it doesn't work then you can try different permutation combinations as we are seeing here so if i run this it will do exactly same thing and it will move the slider 80 pixels in the right hand side it should now move to the right hand side 80 pixels so it looks like something went wrong let's see okay function object has no attribute all right okay so because here i have just missed the brackets here right so make sure when you are having these sort of issues go and check basically why the failures are happening and it will help you to resolve these failures by yourself okay so if i run this now it should be running fine so opening the page maximize and then it has moved and then you can see it has moved in the right hand direction okay so this is how you will handle the slider in the right hand direction now say for example i want to handle or i want to move element 2 in the left hand direction because element 2 if you see it can't move in the right hand direction anymore it it needs to go in the left hand direction right so how can i do it so instead of element 1 let me comment this out and i will use element 2 okay say so for example i want to move element 2 in the left direction okay let me comment this out and i'll use the simplest form there and in the element in place of element one i want to move element two but not in the right hand direction in the left hand direction right so what i have to do is in the x axis i have to provide the negative value right so I, if i can't move in the right direction i have to move in the left direction so i have to provide the negative values okay so instead of minus instead of positive 60 say for example i want to move in the negative direction or the left direction i simply provide the negative 60 and y axis i do not want to move anywhere in the y-axis because it's a horizontal line so i'll provide zero there and this should move element two now in the left hand direction and the upper price range should get adjusted so it should open the page maximize the page and you will see that it has moved in the left hand direction okay now the last thing is say for example i want to move both of these sliders together how can i move it so simply i'll uncomment both right and we'll simply move the right and left together okay so i want to move the element one in the positive direction 60 and element 2 in the negative direction 80 right so this will select a price range from min to max i want to adjust 
both the price ranges from min to max okay so let's run this and see how it works it will run it will open the page maximize and then okay so something went wrong there all right let me check what has happened so element two let me try putting some sleep there after the first selection okay so the first movement when this element one moves in the right hand direction and then i want to move this element two all right let me run again should maximize the page has moved to the right hand side and then you can see that it has moved the left slider as well okay so that's what i was mentioning that many times if you do not handle the weight synchronization properly as you can see i just have added the sleep of two seconds and same piece of code started working so this was because of the synchronization and that's why understanding weights in selenium is very very important because once we have the synchronization or the weights implemented we do not have to first thing hard code these values there because maybe when we handle the weights properly or synchronization properly then all these issues that we see that this particular second web element was not getting moved properly then those things will be sorted out very easily all right now in place of this particular you know line you can use any of these methods that i have explained in case you are still having issues with even after putting sleep or synchronization right so try to explore things and try to go through the documentation see what all methods are available try to replicate the things or go from the manual testing perspective like what exactly you are going to perform as the manual operation on a particular test case or website and then approach your automation script according to that because that understanding manual testing is very important understanding is important your mindset is important before you can just go ahead and start writing the code because if you're just writing the code in the automation not understanding what exactly you are testing you're not a good automation tester okay so having a right mindset and understanding is very very important and that will help you to approach all these issues and things that i have discussed in this particular video very very easily now as part of this video uh, assignment is that you go through and check other websites where you can find the sliders so flipkart is another one try to implement the same thing on the flipkart and see whether you are able to handle that perfectly fine all right so that's all for this particular tutorial i hope this was helpful thank you very much for watching